Lucy sees all. Hi everyone, thanks so much for taking the time to subscribe to this channel, for liking the videos, the shares, and of course the amazing comments. It's therapeutic and the contributions. The moon is going too fast. Twice, if not three times, as fast as it usually goes. When you're looking at the moon with the naked eye, you don't see it moving. They say it's locked in place. When you look with a telescope, you really see it moving. But right now, it's moving way too fast. I've never seen the moon move this fast. And on top of it, as a lot of you, Josh, a whole bunch of you come here and say, Bruce, the moon is in the south or it's out of place. It absolutely is. Look at it running across the screen. These are little details. They're not little details. They're big details. It's important to take note of that. They're talking about the earth moving a little faster. Is it to the point where we can see the moon moving faster? That would be extremely both dangerous and scary because the Earth's atmosphere, the chemistry of the atmosphere would be affected by the different speed in rotation. It's scary too, some of the theories about what could happen. Apparently, guys, Earth has actually been speeding up for a few years now. In 2020, it set new records no less than 28 times according to time and date despite the last record being set all the way back in 2005 this trend looks set to continue in 2022 but scientists are yet to agree on why earth spin is speeding up let me repeat what i just said in reality what it means is they don't know why and that's the scary part don't mean to scare you but at very fast speeds, like about 24,000 miles per hour or over thousands of years, eventually the Earth's crust is going to shift too. It's going to flatten out at the poles and it will be bulging around the equator and we would have enormous earthquakes. And that's what we're seeing happening. An increase in Earth's rotational speed could have very many impacts on our own lives. This ranges from increased earthquakes, we're talking about tsunamis, all the way down to a shortening of the length of our day. People could be floating in Central Africa while the polar ice might melt extremely fast, submerging most parts of the world. Sitting at home on your sofa, have you ever considered that you've never actually been at rest? We are always in motion. Ever wonder what it felt like to be stopped and sitting down, not moving? We'll probably never know. It's true. The Earth is always in relative motion with respect to the universe, revolving around the sun, supposedly, and rotating on its axis. Many natural phenomena that happens around us, such as changes in weather, winds, tides, and many other natural events, these all occur, obviously, because of these two relative motions of our planet, especially its rotation. Those planets and those scientists like you and I, too, that are also so interested in finding out about those planets and why they rotate and why they have certain temperatures, do you ever wonder why? Because it totally, totally changes our lives and our health. It changes everything. As a matter of fact, if Earth was slower, then one full rotation would take more than 24 hours, thus making days and nights longer. Also, our weight would be a lot more. Yeah, I hear you, big guys and gals. <laughs> I wouldn't be too happy either. And this because as the Earth would rotate slower, it would exert less centrifugal force on us and what centrifugal force is it's an apparent force that's acting outward on a body moving around a center and arising from the body's inertia here's an example the apparent force that is felt by an object moving in a curved path that acts outwardly away from the center or rotation when here's an example when the engine 
You have an engine that spins fast enough while centrifugal force overwhelms the springs and pushes them out into the drum, pulling it and the chain along. So the same effect <laughs> in comparison would happen to our bodies there. We'd feel that pressure. We'd feel the, the, the change in a drastic way. Ever notice when you come to see the moon and it's the same area I showed a couple of months ago or weeks ago that it's never the same? Always changing, different. It's definitely an atmosphere. Copernicus, you just saw Copernicus. This is Copernicus. Uh, right beside it to the left, this is an incredible region. You got Kepler Crater that's right over there like a spider web. And all around that, it's just on the edge of Mare Procellarum, right there with the Marius Craters and Copernicus also has craters around it. This Copernicus H, just underneath it, Reinhold, you have um, Landsberg, uh, Kanowski, there's a whole bunch of them, Mortensius, and people don't talk about them. The Gay Lusik, <laughs> that was funny. So this is the moon that I filmed this morning, actually, at between 1 and 2 a.m., from 12 to 1.30 about, um, the date today, the 8th of September, 2022. There's lots to look at. There's so much to look at. Let's start getting in and uh, get some nice close-ups of uh, Mare Serenitatis. There's Aristarchus Crater on the very edge there. We'll get a good view of it. Sinus Iridum. Thanks for watching, everyone. Aristarchus really close up from early this morning. Really close up, and at the same time, we're going to see a tower and its shadow just before arriving to Aristarchus Crater. Another object I'm going to show you. Let me know what you think.
Disclosure's coming soon Disclosure's coming 